We're at Southeast Community College, Lincoln, Nebraska, and we're talking to Dave Grant, one of the instructors here. We're very interested in how they train drivers and what they feel about training in general, including those motor carriers in which the drivers ultimately end up and the further training they receive at those motor carriers. Most of those are called finisher programs. Let's see what Dave has to say about that. I'd be glad to, John. I've, I've had numerous students come back and it, it's quite interesting when you listen to the students come back and relate the stories that they have to tell us of, of the incidents that have happened to them. Uh, the one incident that comes to mind, uh, one of my students, he had got him trained, he got a job in uh, California. He was out there taking his orientation and as it was getting towards the end of the week, why he was ready to go back to the motel room. He ended up about three o'clock in the afternoon. He approached an intersection and uh, many of the roads in California, there are six lanes wide and everything. As he was sitting there, uh, one of the things I always uh, stress to my students is staying back away from a crosswalk. We always want them to stay back at least the, the length, the same as if the treat the crosswalk as if it were the tires on the car in front of you. So that's usually 15 to 16 feet. I like to be back even further. Now that's probably not something necessarily uh, John Q. Public or uh, an untrained driver might know. Correct. And, and these, these safety things you develop over time. And uh, I had been in the trucking industry 36 years before I started training students. I'm going on my 11th year now of training students. Uh, the, the story that I was telling you, John or Steve, had related how he'd come down to this crosswalk and he said that he stayed back just like I had asked him to do. And he witnessed an accident that happened right in front of him. And there was another, there was a truck and a car and another vehicle in that intersection. And what had happened, the truck had pulled up alongside him. The, the truck was evidently bobtailing. The guy was finished for the day. And he pulled right up to the crosswalk. And as so many people want to do, they pull out, creep and creep and creep out into that intersection. I call them creepers. And uh, as they had gotten out there, there was two other vehicles. They uh, had collided in the intersection. As they collided in the intersection, one vehicle veered off and swung right over and hit the front end of this truck that had been creeping out across that crosswalk. And uh, I had gotten an email that following Monday morning, and Steve, he was relating his story of what had happened, and he says, these are the things you told me would happen, and he says, I got to witness it firsthand. He says, what, what a, a story, he says, uh, and to see it firsthand, he says, that, that just really caught, and he says, I wanted to call and share that with you and let you know that what you taught me was correct, and he says, I got to witness it. So that was pretty gratifying for you as an instructor, and you probably run into several other instances like that, I would imagine. I know uh, uh, that a lot of drivers have come back a lot of times and uh, told about how they know about uh, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations or how to properly uh, do a pre-trip inspection, things of that nature, was when some of the experienced drivers out there uh, had never actually been through some training. Uh, so I guess that might uh, also tell you uh, how effective your training is. Yes, it, there's, there's many times my students, uh, we, we expect them to do a very thorough pre-trip inspection. That way they know what is a compliance issue, what's going to put that truck out of service, and, and we try to relate back how that's going to re relate back to them dollars and cents wise. When they're tied up, they're, they're going through a vehicle inspection. Normally those are taking about 45 minutes of time out of your day, but they do happen. That's just part of the industry. But if you've got your truck properly uh, pre-tripped and everything and you have no compliance issues, it's not a problem. It's only 45 minutes. Now, if you have a brake issue and your brakes are out of, of compliance, you may be tied up there an hour and a half, two hours, might even be there a day or more because they're going to have to take that truck to a shop and have it fixed. And uh, the pre-trips, uh, we expect them to know the various parts and, and how that integrates in. Uh, one of the things I stress is knowing component parts. I, I don't expect them to be a, a techie or a technician to work on the truck, but when they know where air is leaking from a particular valve, they can tell 
their dispatcher so they can notify whoever's going to come out and work on that piece of equipment where the uh, problem may lie so they bring parts along so they can cure that problem for them and, and get that truck back on the road. Uh, if the wheels aren't turning, the money's not, not being made for the driver or the company.